All right, question number one. During the construction phase, which is true? A, the architect must produce the shop drawings in a timely manner. B, the architect must review the OSHA requirements appropriate for this site. C, the contractor must respond to the RFIs in a timely manner. D, the contractor is responsible for means and methods. So, okay, first, first one is we look at A, the architect must produce the shop drawings in a timely manner. Architects generally don't produce shop drawings. Uh, the contractors uh, th typically uh, say, for example, a sub or somebody who they're buying the material from uh, will produce the shop drawings. And shop drawings are that kind of middle zone, right? There, there's the uh, construction documents that the architect has put together. Uh, there's uh, a whole bunch of other elements like schedules and things that the contractor has put together. Uh, but there's still always going to be a little bit of a place in between where the, the drawings didn't fully uh, figure out and the contractor doesn't fully know the right answer. So they produce their own drawings in response to the construction documents that the architect has produced. And then the architect reviews those uh, to see, like, okay, does this make sense? So an example might be, um, maybe for steel, uh, maybe a bunch of steel beams and, and columns and there's a bunch of connectors and that's pretty well detailed uh, with a few example details uh, on the construction documents. But somebody, when they're producing the actual piece of steel, needs to place all of the holes for all of the uh, bolts to be able to get through. And so there's a specific drawing that's much more detailed than what the standard construction document would be. And that would be for literally every piece of steel, or at least uh, every um, example piece of steel. Uh, and so that would be a shop drawing. And then the architects, the GC, everybody would review the shop drawings, make sure it was in line with the drawings, uh, with the construction documents, and then uh, either say yes or no to that uh, level of quality for shop drawings. So that's something that the contractors are producing, uh, not the architect. I have seen a few examples where architects actually produce shop drawings. It's kind of a complicated thing, but it's like 0.1% of the time. B, the architect must review the OSHA requirements appropriate for this site. We're going to talk about this a few times um, as we go along here, but absolutely not. Um, the uh, OSHA issues are about workplace, and the job site is not the architect's work workplace. The job site is the contractor's workplace. So the contractor should be looking at the OSHA requirements for the site. Now, if what this said was the OSHA requirements for the design, then that would be a different question. Uh, because you may be doing a factory or something, and there may well be OSHA requirements for the design process. But if we're talking about the construction site, that's the contractor's world. C, uh, the contractor must respond to the RFIs in a timely manner. Um, again, there are a few examples um, where architects actually produce RFIs and the contractors respond to them. Uh, there's a few moments where that comes up. Uh, if there's something going on and the architect doesn't understand a question, you might produce an RFI and it goes the opposite direction. But the vast majority of the time, the RFIs are the contractors have gotten to a certain point of the project and something just doesn't make sense or they just need more clarification or they, and it's a request for information. And so they are just, it's a, a tool for sending out uh, to the architects to say, all right, here's the, here are the items that I need clarification on. Please uh, get, get that back to me. So if C had said the architect must respond to RFIs in a timely manner, that would be a reasonable uh, response. But it doesn't. It says the contractor. So it's just not a typical situation that way. Which leaves us with D. The contractor is responsible for the means and methods. So this is uh, such a sort of simple statement, but it's sort of loaded with all kinds of uh, intense meaning. Uh, and some version of this will show up uh, on the exam somewhere for you, like probably on this exam, but it could show up in one of the other exams. There's a clean line, what's intended to be a clean line. It's actually not so clean, but we'll get into that as we go along. But the idea is there's a clean line between the liabilities of the designer, of the architect, and the liabilities of the builder, the contractor. And that clean line is that the design thinking, the decision making, the design intent is all the architect's liability. The site 
the actual process of building something, the schedule, uh, the where are the trucks going to park when the concrete trucks show up, all of that stuff is the contractors. That's the physical building, the, the making of that, and all of the decision making around the physical building. The decision making around the design, again, is the architect. So architects are design intent, contractors are the actual physical making of these things. And when we talk about the physical making and the sort of all the decisions that go into that process, that's referred to as the means and methods of building. So uh, you'll often hear this term, the means and methods of building. The reason it can be a little complicated is because, you know, we start saying, well, the architects aren't involved with the means and methods of building. You know, like, but wait, well, then why did I just do 15 details about how the concrete uh, formwork is going to get put? It's because that's in the time, the, the framework of the decision making process for the design. Uh, once you actually get to the point where there's a contractor, a GC, and they're in control of the site, the architect is no longer in control of the means and methods. It has switched over to the contractor. The contractor uh, is responsible for all of that schedule, uh, safety, all of those things. So that's why that OSHA one on B really falls into the means and methods uh, for the contractor.